Alright, well, hello everyone and welcome back to the Horror Inside Podcast. I am back with Brandy. As always, <laughs> we are continuing our kick of showing each other favorite classic newer whatever movies that we have some kind of love for to the other person the other one has not seen and today we are talking about one of my picks one of my all-time favorites that was an honorable mention on our top five horror films of all time podcast Um, and that would be fright night 1985's fright night um yeah, it's you gotta a, you gotta specify that because I know it's been remade like every yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw the remake. I remember it being okay, but um, Fright Night, I guess, is an odd pick for me. If anybody knew like my preferred, just you know, subgenres and the kind of horror that I do like, because I've probably said this before, but I I'm not huge on vampire movies. Like that whole right. subgenre and that monster is nothing. Eh, I've never yeah. really seen a lot that's got me into it. Right. But for some reason, Fright Night, again, you know, a lot like a lot of the movies we talk about, a lot of it could have to do with nostalgia, you know? Mm, that's true, yeah. There's plenty of movies I've seen when I was younger that I just loved and kept going back to and watching again and again. And some movies mm-hmm. I just sort of never went back to. I saw like right. once. But Fright Night is definitely one that I've, I've seen so many times and it's in – for me, this says something. You can tell it's one of my all-time favorites because <laughs> um, I have like – my old ass DVD with no special features, and then I have right next to it an awesome collector's edition Blu-ray, which is what I watched That's when cool. Brandy and I watched the movie. That's but really uh, cool. <laughs> but yeah, Brandy was flying to this movie, and it's it's I kind of thought of it like this. I thought of it a little bit like Scream in a way, if mm-hmm. this makes sense. Because while we were watching the movie, I'm sure you quickly realized this Fright Night has its own kind of sense of humor. Yes, which I really did like. <laughs> and and it's like Scream being a, the characters are aware of horror movies and the slasher genre and they're fans. Right. In Fright Night, you're, they're, they're aware of what vampires are and it's just like, you know, vampires on TV and things like that and yeah. kind of pokes fun at itself a little bit. Yeah, I guess just going into it, um, it's been a little bit since we've watched it, but uh, what were your kind of first impressions on it? Well, I know when, and I think in our top five horror movie podcast that we do with your brother, um, Mm -hmm. we, you guys, I mean, obviously he had seen it too. He's seen everything. (laughs) Um, I think you guys had kind of told me like, like the gist, like I knew it was vampire-y and I I also knew which appealed to me, which is why I'm surprised I never saw it either, given my family's history of loving horror and loving classic, like uh, teenage, like 80s movies, high school movies, if you will, in a way, like. You know, I grew up like on The Breakfast Club and Sixteen Candles and Weird Science and all these like classic, classic '80s like teen movies. And the fact that my parents like loved horror too, but I just, I don't I don't actually I told you I was gonna ask my dad to see if he's actually even seen this one. I'm sure he has, but um, but maybe it's also because I feel like I can agree with you in that like vampires have just never really appealed. Like they've never been a thing where I'm like, ooh, they're spooky or they're interesting or they're hot as some people think of the whole <laughs> Twilight thing or whatever. I've just never really I don't know. So. Maybe that's why maybe like, you know, maybe my dad has seen it, but maybe vampires aren't his thing and he didn't really like it. Or maybe he just, I don't know. I, I have to still ask him about that. But my first impressions was I I did love the fact that it took place in the 80s. It was so 80s. I love that. Um, mm-hmm. I really liked the, I remember like the, um, see, I can't remember characters names. So I'm sure once I bring them up, you'll be able to sort of say their mm-hmm. name. But um, the old man characters that sound bad to say that oh yeah <laughs> the one uh, that's like peter the vincent who is played by ronnie yeah. mcdowell yeah he's great i loved him he <laughs> he cracked me up like i know he doesn't come into it till like a little bit like like well he's introduced as like the the host of that tv whatever but yeah his actual character doesn't come in and meet the actual main characters for a little bit but he's like he stood out to me he was funny as hell like when the <laughs> when the main character guy was like charlie uh, yeah, Charlie, when he was like, you know, there's really a vampire living there, or when he was trying to convince him, and he was just like, and he just like ran to his car, and like, <laughs> yeah, and he yeah, was like yeah. really like, oh my god. I and, know, Peter Vincent was like, you know, nobody believes in vampires anymore, and he was talking, he was speaking about it like, you know, he, nobody was watching his show anymore, and then Charlie freaks him out by saying like, he actually believes, and there's a vampire living next to him, yeah. and, and Peter just sort <laughs> of freaked, just sort of looking at him like he's crazy, and runs into I know, the car. Like, he zooms to his car, and he's like trying to get away from him, I do like that. So he was a character that was very memorable. Also the, and again, I'm horrible with character names and I only saw it once, so forgive me, but um, the friend character. Friend, the, the, evil yeah, Ed. Evil, 
Oh, yeah, there we go. And I should know that. Ed, my boyfriend. <laughs> <came in today. laughs> um, he was funny. Uh, there was a moment, and oh my god, I I laughed so hard, and I remember you saying like, yeah, you liked what I thought it was funny because you thought it was funny. It's like a unique like type of like like humor. Like like maybe yeah. like sitting there wouldn't think it's that funny, but it was when the girl like Amy, she, Amy, she, and, she hit him. Yeah, Amy something. and Ed <laughs> went to see Peter Vincent after Charlie tried, and they were trying yeah. to convince Peter to come help them and come. I mean, they weren't really buying what Charlie was saying, but they thought it would help Charlie or something. Right, so right. they went to Peter to get him to help them and come sort of prove that their, the neighbor, um, Jerry Dandridge, was not a vampire. So right. they tried to convince him to do that. And then they were, I, I think Amy, like, hit him or something. They were kind of going back and forth at each other, and then she hit Ed, and then he's just, like, and you even said, like, he didn't sound offended or anything. He was just like, Amy! Amy, yes! Yeah, yeah, he just says her name, like, oh my god, it was very, like, realistic. Like, he didn't, he didn't, like, hit her back. He wasn't like, you bitch, or whatever. It was just, hey, and it, oh my god, it cracked me up. Like, I love that type of yeah. like, humor that's very subtle. But... Well, yeah, when my brother, my brother mentioned, said this when we, uh, I talked about it on the podcast, that, um, and I 100% agree, 1000% agree, that he, he said that uh, Fright Night, the movie, is perfectly cast. Like, all of right. the actors are great and amazing, and they just, all the characters are so dynamic, and yeah. even the smaller roles, like Charlie's mom, who was funny, oh, kind yeah, of flighty, funny. and a Oblivious. little dopey, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, which I remember, she cracked me up, too. Like, I like the, yeah, and I, I liked the, the main character, Charlie. I don't know the actor's name, but I really, really liked him. I think he fit, and I'm, I was surprised that I didn't know more actors in this Evil Ed did kind of look familiar, and so did um, – oh, obviously, I think I knew uh, – what's his name? Peter Vincent. Oh, and Cowell. I know – yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know um, – what's his name? Oh, my God. The guy that – Chris Sarant, uh, Jerry. Yeah. I remember when he came on screen, and I was like, oh, my God, I know him. And you were immediately like, well, do you know what you know him from or whatever or remember? And I was just like – Wait, you got to give me a minute. And it took me like like two whole minutes, and then randomly, like you and I, like weren't even talking about that anymore. And I was like, "Oh my god, is he from Child's Play?" And you're like, "Yeah," <laughs> which such was so di- weird. It's yeah, such a it different so character, different. <laughs> but uh, interesting because um, I, you know, Fright Night was a few years before Child's Play, but interesting because they were both directed by uh, Tom Holland. Oh, that's cool. That's probably like, eh, yeah, my buddy. Let me cast him. No, he did really good though in both parts. Like he did play a complete different. Like I've only seen him. At least I think I've only seen him in Child's Play. He may have been in other random stuff I've seen, but uh-huh. I'm most familiar with him in Child's Play. And he's like, you know, the good cop guy. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. and in this, it was like the complaint. I was like, holy shit, he is nuts. In this. <laughs> I know. Night. There was even some um, other actors that, because you said you recognized a couple of them. And um, Roddy McDowell, I mean, he's a huge actor. He's in a million yeah. things. But yeah. I knew him from the one little thing. And we had watched it before, but he ironically enough it plays in a tales from the crypt episode where he plays oh, a vampire plays, yeah the one he, that like, was like at a blood bank yeah 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 i remember that one yeah that's interesting i when i looked at his imdb i i knew him from a couple things too i can't remember now which is terrible but i i looked i remember when the movie ended i'm like i have to look this guy up because he looks so familiar that it's bothering me and mm. i looked through his imdb and i i remember like it's specifically seeing one thing where i was like oh yeah i'm really familiar with that but um but no yeah all the acting was really great you know what's funny though i guess going into it I had a completely different like I knew it was about vampires I knew it was like an 80s movie and that's like and that's basically all Mm -hmm. I knew and I for whatever reason I thought it was going to be like a bunch of different vampires and you know right a little culty like I don't know I really I had like this whole different and then it was just like the one main guy that lives also with the other guy who was something but wasn't a vampire which was crazy yeah um I don't know. It was it was really unique it, the way the story. Like I was expecting something completely different. When you hear vampires, you just kind of get like like I thought of the cliche like okay, there's probably gonna be a couple vampires. They're gonna kidnap kids, turn them into vampires. Like I I just thought something completely different than what it actually was, which was cool. Like when he actually ended up in Charlie's house, like the the vamp- what was the vampire guy's name in the movie? The Jerry. 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 Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he ended up in his house and everything, like, like shit got real, real like, really fast. You know, I know, like, I know, and it was kind thing. of fucked, it was kind of messed up, and Charlie, he went first, you know, if he didn't go to see Peter Vincent at first, and I think at one point you even said, like, wow, this is, this is like, he's, like, one of the most easily accessible celebrities, because they're just going to his house and showing I up know. on set of the show. Like, he might be, like, a local celebrity or whatever, maybe that was the deal. Yeah. I was, like, yeah, I was really but like, how they all, this. they they knew where he lived and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> walked up on him like we need your help oh my god um yeah but no uh before that charlie went to 
to Evil Ed and asked, you know, for his advice, which I always thought was a little weird because um, in the beginning of the movie when Charlie is, you know, in his bedroom with his girlfriend Amy and mm -hmm. the Fright Night TV show, Peter Vincent's show is on TV and and Amy's like, but don't you want to watch this? You love this show. And yet he had to go to his friend to ask him, like, about vampires. Oh, and about vampires, yeah. That, that was a little weird. Like, he loved the show, but he had to go ask his friend. But no. And it was sort of messed up where Ed said, like, and, you know, a bunch of things, but um, that the, a vampire could only be invited in by, like, um, the rightful owner of the house. So at oh, that point, yeah. like, okay, maybe he'll be safe. And then he goes home. And of course, his mom had invited him in and said, come over anytime. I know, right? I was like, oh, sh you know what I like, too, that, you know, some people may be like, oh, you know, I would have rather the mystery go on longer. But I kind of like how they because I thought it was going to be a dragged out thing where this guy was going to play that he wasn't a vampire for super long. Like you weren't going to see anything till like the end. It wasn't going to be a big reveal till the end. But they kind of just got like right into it. Like once you saw him in the Charlie's house, you're like, oh, shit, you kind of get that like feeling where you suspect it and then all of a sudden like shit hits the fan once the mom is like in her room and asleep and everything and they end up in the in charlie's bedroom and everything i was like holy shit i thought it was gonna be i just thought the movie was gonna be so different they kind of like threw things at you right away which i liked because i was like oh is this just gonna be like a cliche dragged out vampire movie and even if it was you know whatever i was like i'm on board with it but mm -hmm. i thought it was gonna be something completely different then when he actually like started turning into his actual like form like right in charlie's room yeah like, holy shit that was, yeah, like, that's just, pretty he, cool yeah, he just slowly looked more and more like his true form. And on yeah. that, like, and we said this when we were watching this, like, I, I will never praise this movie enough or <laughs> um, just uh, how amazing the 80s practical effects are. Because obviously yes. there's no CG or anything because it's the 80s. Right. The practical right. effects are, are fantastic. And, like, one scene in particular, spoilers, as we go through the movie, we always talk about everything. But right. um, when you know, evil Ed is turned into a vampire. Oh yeah. And you know, this, the scene of him like going down the alleyway. Um, Oh yeah. Yeah. Like it's a joke. I think it might've been at, it was, it was after yeah. they had all went over to Peter's, uh, to, uh, Jerry's house to, you know, prove that he wasn't a vampire. And then they're walking home and Ed thinks it's a joke and goes down the alley by himself. And then, mm -hmm. you know, Jerry just keeps every corner he turns in the alleyway. Jerry's like behind him. There, yeah. I even got like a deja vu, like I thought, because it was a recent movie we saw and reviewed. Like that reminded me a little bit of the Pale Lady from Scary Stories. <laughs> oh yeah, where she's just every down every hallway. Yeah, that's yeah. Funny. So that was a really that was a really well constructed scene. I loved. Um, yeah. That he's just alone in that alleyway, and that's how he gets turned. But uh, but later when he is sort of transforming. And oh, sort of, yeah. he transform he like turns into a wolf at some point to Peter Vincent and then after Peter kills him and he's turning back, like that oh, looked, yeah, that, that looked yeah. Um, it was nothing was like, phony about shit. that. I know, I like that's why like when people say, Oh, you know, old movies you know, I've heard people like literally say this like verbatim, like eighties movies look so cheesy and older I can't watch older like with the effects are terrible, but it's like, you know, I think a lot of that practical shit looks a, like way more realistic than than cg and i remember you and i are in agreement about this and i completely still stand by this that if you can't do something practically if it's just something that cannot be done practically mm -hmm. of course use cg that's fine then i can buy it it's fine and i'm not saying cg looks like total shit obviously they can do so much with it nowadays but yeah I, there's something about those practical effects that it just like you know when they like Blood, for example, is one I always use. When they CG blood in a movie, it looks terrible. Like, just use some freaking stage blood. They dumped a whole shitload of it on Sissy's basic. Like, come I on. And like, <laughs> you know, it can look, it just looks so much better. So, yeah, when he was, I remember in that scene, I was like, holy shit, like, this is really, like, it looked ahead of its time. Because didn't you say that came out in 80, was it 85? 85. Yeah. yeah. And it looked, like, really, really good. And, again, all practical. And I was just like, holy shit. Like, that scene where he was, like, slowly transforming. And it was kind of sad, too, because he was kind of turning back into, like, his human form. And he was, like, dying. And it yeah. was just really, really fucked up. But, yeah, yeah I have to praise that, too. Because I, I, I'm, like, a sucker for practical effects anyway. But that movie did a really, really good job with it. Yeah. Well, the 80s is, like, um, especially with the horror genre, it's full of so many incredible you know practical effects and right things that still hold up a lot like even like there's american werewolf in london or paris oh, and the yeah. difference but that's not well yeah. known for its like transformation scene yeah. and even in this Boy, movie too painful. 
<laughs> yeah, even in this movie, even more on that. Um, I love the wide mouth, like the huge caricature when they're in their full vampire form, like Jerry. Oh, yeah. And then even Amy at the end looked really disturbing and really oh, like. Oh, yeah, she looked different, yeah. Like I their mouths are just so huge. Yeah, it's creepy. I it's love really, it because yeah. it looks so disturbing and off. And but also it looks real. It doesn't look like I mean, maybe you'd laugh at it, but I wouldn't. I think the way it was designed right. and the way it was executed was just amazing. And no, I guess I made it a, a unique kind of vampire as well. Because yeah. I, I just love their the, the, the look of their final forms with their like huge giant mouths like smiling. And that's even on the yeah. cup too. Yeah, and it's cool to have a vampire design that's completely unique to that movie or whatever. Because vampires, you know, what do you do? Give them fangs, give them like a fucking cape, you know, Dracula style, whatever. I mean, yeah. you can do the stereotypical, but like when a, when a movie or whatever takes the vampire thing and makes it its own. Like we always talk about that Stephen King one. Uh, what is it called? Salem? Is it Salem? Salem Slot. Yeah. yeah the, and we always talk about, even though we've never seen it, we both should really see it. Because we both say that vampire looks really cool and creepy and yeah, unique to like a Stephen does. King thing. And I think in, in Fright Night, they do a really good job at doing that as well. Yeah. Like there was nothing really like like cliche about it. Like, yeah, they have like the they did because they did get like big like teeth and shit, right? But like they uh -huh. like, it was more or less like I don't know, it looked it did look really, really unique to this movie and I like that. And, and it was like, just, a, like steal it from something. Yeah. And it was like a progression of the like the, the way they looked. Like it seemed like he could sort of hold yeah. it back. There's scenes earlier where yeah. Charlie is sort of looking through his window through his binoculars and he sees like Jerry and like a, a, a naked w well, yeah. They're yeah. just like standing in the middle of like the window for some yeah. reason. Yeah, as he's but gonna that they're they're <laughs> yeah, there Charlie notices his like really disturbing long fingers and long fingernails and then you see do you just see the teeth at that point? I know I like that too. I like I really liked uh, and I know we were gonna obviously bring this up and talk about it because I remember when the movie first opened and it, they were showing like shots of like the houses. The fucking houses in that movie are are gorgeous and awesome. Like they're the type of house like the one that Jerry lives in. Like, uh -huh. Whenever they showed the outer like exterior of it, I was like, holy shit, that's really cool because it was like a, it almost looked like a like a creepy old like like mansiony like house or something and i don't know even when they even when you go inside and there's like the stained glass window that was behind him in a lot of the shots like it was a really really cool looking house it was like sort of i mean again we compare everything to resident evil because we're completely obsessed we'll just admit it but kind of gave me like mansion vibes when they went into the house it was like really, mm -hmm. really cool so i like i don't know where it was shot or if it was like you know if the interior of the house was different than the like if it was shot on a sound stage or whatever but i liked the whole setting of the movie too and the, the house i think it fit for like the vampire vibe it was really cool it was like a Victorian style house. That was the word I was looking for. And I love yeah. those type of houses. Like I love farmhouses like Judd's house and Pet Cemetery, but I also love the Victorian, which I guess they kind of go hand in hand, that old type of look mm -hmm. of those houses. I love it. So that was Yeah, cool. and I guess I guess going off on that, um, that house specifically, I think one of the first really um great scenes in the movie is when Charlie um convinces Peter Vincent to come help and Amy and Ed go there too, and they go to that house to sort of try to prove that he's a vampire or well, Charlie wants to prove it. Everyone else just kind of wants Charlie to get over this, and they don't believe right. it. So that first great scene takes place with them all in the house, and like Amy is like Amy's like charmed by him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, and this goes to the fact that vampire movies are not particularly our thing, so we wouldn't necessarily know all the different abilities a vampire has but it was pretty it was very faithful to you know the traditional vampire yeah. i think you were even confused at points where you like you thought like why is she so take like is she stupid taken why is she yeah, so yeah. taken by him but <laughs> yeah. it's because he, you know he, like, they, puts her in a, tra in a yeah. trance kind of yeah. yeah and then it was like a weird thing where they showed in his basement he had a painting of a woman that looked exactly oh, like that looked exactly yeah, I remember that too. I was, I, I remember being kind of confused by that at first, and then I was like, and then as the movie went on, and he were like revealed certain yeah. things, I was like, oh okay, but yeah, um, but no, going off on the um, like the trance thing and the whole you know traditional, I really actually like, and this might sound really really weird, but just hear me out. <laughs> I do like how in this movie, because it is a vampire movie, all almost every vampire story. Even I think going back to like maybe even the Dracula like movies right. or whatever has there's like some type of like sex appeal when it comes to like the whole vampire right. thing. and that's like I mean Twilight took that shit and ran it into the fucking ground mm -hmm. I can admit that like I was a teenager at one point where I was like oh Twilight and then I grew up and I was like eh but um 
Um, I don't think they're total garbage like a lot of people, but that's a different story. I also don't think they're glorious like fucking 14 year olds, but you know, whatever. But I mean, <laughs> um, but I mean, when it com- when it comes to a vampire story, there's always that sort of like because you know, ooh, the biting of the neck and the blood, and there's always just something kind of like sensual sort of about it. And I do like how this movie kept that too, because I didn't I didn't expect that. I'm like, okay, this is an 80s movie. Maybe it'll go more over the top, and it'll be just gory and maybe right. kind of cheesy. But if they did keep like the scene like where they're in the club, for instance, and Charlie's like making the phone call, and that man was on the phone for fucking ever because uh, Amy. I know, and like, I <laughs> and I joked, I joked during that scene like, oh, once again, he's just like ignoring her as he did plenty of times in the movie. Right, like, he's just focused on his phone. <laughs> yeah, like whatever's happening with next door or Jerry or he's a vampire, he's just completely <laughs> ignoring Amy. And it was even a great scene earlier in the movie where they were in like their school cafeteria. And she, he was, she was, he was like apologizing to her or whatever. And then right. he gets distracted by a news report. Yeah, the woman immediately. Dying, and she and like, like, it's pissed off, goes and takes somebody's like messy cheeseburger and goes oh, and yeah. slams it on his head or in his face. I know. I was like, damn girl, but I get it. Like he was literally just apologizing. And then he completely just got like so distracted. But, um, but no, I yeah, like, that, that. I like that whole like part of it. Cause at first, like I was like, I was a little bit confused and then I was like, okay, wait. And then even later, like after that scene, when he kind of, I guess like kidnaps her or takes her or whatever, and they're in like his room or whatever. Uh-huh. And that whole scene, like, I was just like, I do like how they're keeping that. And I mean, I don't, what's his real name again? The one Jerry who or the Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, as a female, he's a pretty good looking dude. So, I mean, like, I like how they kept that sort of. Thing. And even the mom, uh, Charlie's mom was kind of obviously like charmed by him and was like, oh, yeah, yeah, like, I like I like that whole angle because then it's like, oh, he's trustworthy. He's whatever. But obviously he's not. But mm-hmm. I like that the whole club scene was really, really cool, even though she, w- she was pissing me off when she was in her trance. The whole I know, <laughs> <laughs> I, although I love the club scene and I and I mentioned this when we were watching it, Um, the way that scene is shot. Is, is really brilliant. I love it. And I think at one point you were confused because you couldn't quite tell what they were – they kept cutting back and forth of her oh, dancing yeah. with Jerry. And then it, like, showed her – they were, like, spinning, dancing together. Um, yeah. And then it kept showing her spinning by herself and, like, her hands up or whatever. And you were confused, like, what oh. was happening. But it was because she kept looking at her. She was – it was like a full-length mirror and she was looking at herself spinning to nothing. And I think, that's what, yeah. I think that's what broke her out of the trance too. Oh, yeah, because she was like, oh, shit, he doesn't have a reflection. Maybe Charlie's not insane. <laughs> like, Right. Yeah, yeah. So I, I love that scene and the whole the way it was constructed. I think that was really good. A couple more things on the scene where they went to Jerry's house. I always was a little confused as to why, because I think that what, what Peter Vincent used to sort of convince Charlie that he wasn't a vampire was, like, gave him some holy water just to drink. And Oh, yeah, yeah. And... Somehow it still worked. Like, I always was confused. I thought, like, when I was younger, he, like, Jerry, uh, yeah, Jerry, like, held it up towards, like, his fireplace. And I thought, is that, like, diluting it or something? I don't right. know. <laughs> I don't know. But then I thought, like, is it is it maybe because at that point, maybe the holy water also is a similar thing to the cross, where at the end of the movie, Jerry kept saying, like, it won't, it only works if you believe. And at that point... Oh. Um, Peter Vincent didn't believe any of this, you know, as him as a real vampire. So maybe it worked on the same thing, and then it just the water didn't do anything. Um, well, I see. I got from that scene, and maybe I'm to, you've seen the movie way more. You grew up with it. I was thinking that Peter thought Charlie was just so insane, and he just wanted to get it over that he literally so he just, just put like water in, yeah, like, like yeah, 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 like sink into this little bottle, and he didn't even get it blessed. It wasn't actual holy water, so that's mm-hmm. why I thought maybe it didn't affect or do maybe. anything, but. I guess it could also yeah. be like what you were saying, the whole belief thing, because they did, you know, push that, and that makes sense. So maybe that's why that does make sense. Yeah, I could see, I could see your theory as well, uh, Peter. Yeah, because he's like, like just, this guy's insane. Let me just get get him to drink some, some of this tap water. tap water. Yeah, tap water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um, but in that scene too, I like how Peter does sort of end up finding out by just by using that little. I forget why he pulls out that. Doesn't he have like a little like mirror in his hand? Yeah, he had like a little pocket mirror, and then um, it for whatever reason, and then saw over his shoulder that Pete, uh, that Jerry did not have a, a reflection. Yeah, that was really cool. And he was like, and then he drops it, and he's like all nervous. I remember that. I don't know if there's any if you. I mean, we're kind of going all over the place, but that's fine. That's how these podcasts go. I like <laughs> I like when sometimes it's more fun when they don't have like just straight structure. But um, I feel like we should talk a little bit about jerry's uh like roommate or friend because that right. kind of confused me too so i guess that like, you can sort of clarify as we're talking about it but i or i don't even know if you fully know but like what was he supposed to be because obviously he was some type of 
supernaturally being as well, but he wasn't right. a vampire or something. Yeah, I um, well, because he was he was his friend and you know yeah. sort of his protector too during the day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So he wasn't a vampire because he could he was around during the day. But I think I don't I don't know if it, there ever has been an answer as to what he is. Like okay. if he's like a, a ghoul or something. I don't know. Like I also feel like I've, yeah, yeah. I also feel like I've heard in the past like it's kind of like a joke. Like at there's fright night panels and things, and they're asked that question, and they're like, we don't know. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> well, yeah. I guess it's never fully like in your face explained, but he's obviously some type of. Thing he, because he, he could be die. a ghoul, whatever that is. Yeah. I don't really know what a ghoul is. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, is he like a zombie? Because he wasn't like dying, even though they shot him like yeah. multiple times. And didn't they shoot him? How did they? They did get rid of him, but I can't remember now. They did something where he died, right? I, I know Peter was shooting at him. Um, yeah. And then I just remember him like sort of dissolving, and like that was oh. also a really well made scene too. Yeah, and that scene reminded me a lot of the. Um, effects in this and the way the bodies like dissolved when they were like finally killed i remember i think i even said this while we were watching it that it reminded me of evil dead how the bodies kind of like shrivel i mean evil dead looks a little more cheesy just because it had such a low budget but again i love that i think it adds to the whole movie and the atmosphere yeah i don't know what the budget of this movie was but i feel like this movie had a pretty fairly high budget just based on yeah the effects are amazing Yeah. yeah That whole, like, bubbling thing, though, is really cool. It does remind me, like, whenever you and I do get around to watching Evil Dead again, because I definitely would love to do that one and do a podcast eventually, um, uh-huh. you'll see, like, what I'm talking about, like, the way that the dissolving is, and it just, like, yeah. kind of go in and go. I like that. That was cool. Yeah. Well, then I guess if we're just going to move um, for the story at this point, Peter finds out, finds out that uh, Jerry is a vampire because of his reflection and then immediately, like, runs home and starts packing or something because he wants yeah. to just leave. He's just, like, all fucked up from it. He's like, nope. <laughs> and then it was, it was kind of scary, too, in the, the nightclub scene after um, Amy's sort of broken out of her trance. And she Charlie gets her, and they're running away. And then because I think a bouncer stepped in the way and got Amy away from Jerry. And then Jerry, like, got pissed and just, like, killed the, <laughs> the, the oh, bouncers yeah. at the club. And then yeah. everyone started freaking out and, like the whole club was like just running out and then amy i think on the staircase sort of got pulled away with a crowd and then of course jerry got her again and that's when he takes her to his um his house again and to the scene you were talking about where they were she was kind of dressed like the woman in the painting and then they they had sex i think and then he bit her and turned her into a vampire yes and then yeah i didn't expect that scene either where he kind of like just went fucking crazy in the club i was like i was like you know he he wants to keep this whole secret of his, you know, under wraps or whatever. But, like, when he started, like, just freaking out and killed the bouncer and, and was doing things, like, in public, I was like, holy shit, what is he doing? <laughs> but yeah. it was kind of cool to, like, see that because I was like, he is trying really hard to, like, hit, like to be normal and blend and not have his secret out. And then all of a sudden, he was just, he just like, killing everybody in the club. <laughs> which I don't think is ever brought up later, but it doesn't really have to be because of how the movie right. ends. Well, I mean, there was a few other fun moments with with evil ed when he i think peter vincent runs out of the charlie and peter go back to charlie eventually convinces peter to help him kill the vampire oh and they go back to his house and um at a certain point and again more great practical effects like they show they show uh jerry in his like bat form flying around his house and coming at them and that was also um, I loved some of the ways it was shot earlier when they they didn't reveal his like form as a bat, where there's it would just be the camera. In his point of view, it was in like his, his point perspective. Of view. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I, I loved those, but then they when they showed him the bat later, it it um it, it looked really really cool. It's still cheesy '80s. I think that was a little cheesy. The bat <laughs> looked a little rubbery, maybe. I mean, that always adds to it, though. Again, '80s, you know. It's gonna, yeah. be, especially compared to stuff that is um is made now. It's gonna always kind of look a little. Yeah. But I I think, like we said, it always looks better. I yeah. mean, a lot of the stuff in this movie was complete. Like that scene. I remember how confused. <laughs> this is so random. But like speaking on the scene, you know, we're talking about the effects and everything. So as soon as you talk about the effects in this movie, I immediately think of, um, the scene with with Evil Ed, uh, 
I guess D transit. Like he's going like back into like his human form. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember, <laughs> do you remember how confused I was? I was like, what? I think I was like, what? When he was just like a wolf running at him, which was cool, but I didn't get it. I was like, wait, is he a werewolf? Is he a vampire? Yeah, yeah. Why is there? A... And it was like, it looked like a real legit, like, like wolf or like husky dog or some shit. Yeah. Was, like running. And I was like, what is going on? I think I was always confused too when I was younger, like thinking he was turned into something else. But he definitely was turned into a vampire. I guess the the lore and the logic in this film's version of a vampire is like that's their like final form or something. That's what I was thinking. I was like, okay, and I, every version of a vampire story has its own like, you know, this is what a va- vampire. I mean, all of them across the board have yeah, they they drink blood, they can turn into bad. Like that's usually there's like some common ones, but I do like when a vampire story does have its own unique spin on things and i feel like this because or maybe that is like a a thing in the lore that i just never knew where they can you know also be like werewolves or wolf wolf like Mm -hmm. or whatever which is really cool so and i like the way that scene was shot because i remember when the wolf just started like running at him i was like scared from him like holy shit that looks like it was a legit wolf running at this man i know (laughs) you (laughs) it's a good it's a good place to bring this up but i remember there was multiple times before this scene that you were getting and even after it too you were getting very concerned for for peter's well-being you kept thinking oh, he was gonna get he, killed i was like this is gonna be like he he was like the donald pleasance and judd of that movie i kept saying that to you he was the adorable <laughs> old man he was funny he was interesting like every time he was on screen I, I really was entertained by him i really liked him so i was like oh fuck he's gonna die like and i was actually surprised and again huge spoiler even though we talk about everything when we do podcasts so should be no surprise but i was really surprised that nobody died in this movie except ed and i was like, kind of and yeah. i like him so i know <laughs> yeah i know he was a great character but i think i love that even he which i guess vampires do to some extent i love that he kept his personality when he was a vampire like hey, earlier when he was bullshit. he's supposed to be Charlie's friend and he's like laughing at him all the time and oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> making fun of him. I know. I like that. I, I like, well, even when he was like human before he gets bit or whatever, I liked uh, him and Charlie's like friendship and whole dynamic. I thought that was cool. Like, remember he kept saying, stop calling me evil. Like he didn't like when people like yeah, that, even yeah, though yeah. that was like his nickname, which was so, which was great. So yeah, he was like one of my other favorites besides, uh, um peter, peter yeah he, besides him i would say that ed was yeah. like my other favorite although charlie was really good too he was an interesting main character i mean he's obviously like the 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 one the that lead. drives the story so he you know has to have certain things that he does like oh he freaks out about you know but he still had layers he was really good i liked his the actor that played him and i had never seen him before i don't know if he was like a regular 80s actor at that time but i had actually never seen him in anything which is surprising i don't know if he has been in more than just that in the 80s but i've never seen him but he was really good yeah but there was even moments in the movie where i think you know it it could have worked when charlie very initially he goes to the police and Mm -hmm. he's just he just is telling them about like i think he saw like he was saying like he saw the woman who was then reported missing and dead or whatever right uh, it was reported on tv he, i think he just went to them and said he saw her go into the house but then he kind of gave away too much and started talking about the vampire and then the cop just left and was like don't ever yeah <clears throat> that that was annoying and i knew that was gonna every time you watch a movie like that where there's some type of creature monster or whatever and only one person knows about it and they're trying to convince other people you're always like don't fucking come right out and say you moron they're gonna think and i remember like saying that i'm like do not say the words vampire to this freaking cop and of course he said it and the guy was like oh stop playing games and he like leaves in there and i'm like what kind of cop is that even if the claims are completely outrageous they still are supposed to look into stuff i like know that. i know that cop is pretty sh- that cop is pretty <laughs> shitty too like he got really pissed off like i guess because he thought charlie it. was wasting his time because i remember yeah. when he leaves he like gets in the car and like before he leaves he's like pointing his finger at charlie and he says if you ever you know call me again i'll throw you in jail forever it's I like, know. for what, what, for wasting your time? Like, you're pretty pissy about... <laughs> I know. And Not I even going to investigate, like, what about the whole, I saw that woman go into this house? Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, it was kind of ridiculous that he just completely, like, dropped <laughs> it. I guess that's like, you know, he thought of him as just this, this young kid I, or whatever, but... <laughs> and I guess they had to go that logical route, but then they then had, it, he would have got they had to, right yeah, but then they also had to lead Charlie to Peter Vincent. And that's another thing. One of the things I loved about this, I love, always loved about this movie is I love the dynamic between Charlie and Peter. Like they established, yeah. Amy says at the beginning that Charlie is like, he loves Peter Vincent. So he's a huge fan of them, his. And then, you know, Peter is this like 
vampire killer on TV, and then they get to team up at the end. I really love that. That That's is cool. Really cool. Yeah, and I didn't expect that either. I just thought at first when he when he when Charlie first goes up to Peter Vincent and he's like trying to convince him that there's a vampire lives next door and he thinks he's crazy and you know that whole scene. I was like, I was thinking in my head like, is there going to be any more relevances? Because I literally thought it was just going to be that one scene. Peter Vincent wasn't going to be in it anymore. They were just showing him because he was some guy on. T- I don't know. I I didn't really right. Know, and I then think maybe where that was going. Maybe yeah. maybe then Charlie would just be resorted to doing it all on his own. On his own, right? That's kind of what I thought. I was like, okay, maybe this guy's like a big actor, which turns out he actually is. So maybe he's making like this type of cameo, and he's not going to be in it anymore. But I do actually like that they, again, quite easily found his house and were, yeah. like, were able to convince him to like to help them out. Oh, really and poor cool. Peter Vincent too. There was even subtle moments too when he, you know, when Charlie first, you know, found him and I was talking to him about it, and like I said. When Peter said, you know, nobody believes in vampires anymore, and um, he was referring to the ratings or whatever. Uh, but then oh, at, yeah. at his house, too, he even, like, had, like, papers around or something, and, like, on his door or whatever that he was, like, notice of eviction or whatever. He was getting evicted. Oh, yeah. uh, maybe he got fired from that show or something because... He didn't have a lot of money. Yeah, that that was... And I was like, oh, he's so adorable. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Really no, but there was a couple other moments I loved when... I think Evil Ed went to Peter's house after he had been turned. Mm-hmm. And that, well, no, he he believed it at that point, I think, is when he was trying to leave. And that's how, you know, Ed was able to get in because Peter didn't know right. he was turned. But then, and it, it kind of, it kind of led, when Peter gets out a, uh, a cross and, like, push, sticks it on Ed's head and it's, like, burns the, the cross into his forehead. Oh, into his, yeah. And, um... I, I feel like that image of Evil Ed is like he, he's he's a very iconic '80s vampire. I feel even more right. than Jerry, just because of the look and then the cross. Yeah, he's got like that head. mullet hair or whatever. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, no, he had short hair, but then <laughs> when he well, later, when before he gets killed and Peter runs next door and and is trying to get Charlie's mom. And then, like, it's just Ed laying in the bed, and he rolls over, and he has, like, a Raggedy Ann wig on. Oh, yeah, I remember that, and that freaked me out. I was like, wait, I, at first, I feel like when th- when that initially happened, I was like, wait, who is that? And then I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, yeah, you had, like, a red like, Yeah, but they cleverly, it was just, like, one throwaway line from the mom earlier in the movie where she said, tomorrow I'm starting my, like, 3 a.m. shift or whatever. So she wasn't around for all of that, so they didn't even kill her. They just sort of had her working yeah and then she's just gonna walk into her house and see this bloody like dead like boy I, know. On her floor. <laughs> I remember thinking that too i'm like what the fuck he's like she's gonna be traumatized i was gonna say something about the ending too or not the uh oh about amy didn't she also like she looked when she was in her like full form or whatever like at the at the very end when she's like uh-huh. going after charlie and everything is she i remember saying this in the movie she ended up looking like way different than even the actress that like, like her hair like looked different and she just looked I mean obviously she looked creepy and all yeah. messed up because of the transformation but like she looked really like was it the same actress though they just put a bunch I, they just I've they never just, heard otherwise okay because so. she looked like really different which was cool because she it, I was like that's really creepy because she didn't I wonder look, how I was just gonna say doesn't I she have short hair and then she has she long does hair, so the, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah it was cool it was I always creepy. just wondered I wonder how uncomfortable um because like when people get makeup and prosthetics and things done they're always like they can be a pain i've heard but like i wonder how i've always wondered how uncomfortable that specific makeup and prosthetics were when her mouth their mouth is so wide gaping yeah yeah so do you have like behind the scenes on your your blu-ray and stuff that maybe yeah like go into that that's kind of cool because maybe like they would talk about like I'm sure they were in makeup for freaking hours which is probably Probably. yeah definitely especially for the 80s um yeah well, there was just a couple other things I wanted to talk about, I guess, on Amy. I liked that she did survive, and, like, at a certain point, you're just like, how? She, well, she was bit, so that's yeah, it. How, yeah. I liked the whole ending of her getting oh. turned, and then she, like, is attacking Charlie, and Jerry's attacking Peter, but I think Peter, the way they save her is, they said, Peter said that if we can, if we can kill Jerry before Dawn right, or whatever. Yeah. Because he turned her, her, her. to normal, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I don't, I don't know if that's original to this movie or that is maybe a vampire thing. Um, but I really like it because, yeah, because that way it, it it allowed the audience to be like, holy shit, she got bit, like there's she's fucked now. And then Hitler was a way to sort of, you know, retract that though, like let's have and her like get save her, yeah, but, and still like yeah, have her survive the movie. Because I initially, I, like I said, I'm especially for like a '80s horror movie, you would think like way more people would have gotten killed, but I actually do like that. 
everybody survives except Ed, unfortunately, which he should have been one of the ones. But, I mean, I do like that. Because I thought Amy, I was like, okay, they, they killed Ed. They're not, And then I thought they were going to kill Peter, but they didn't, which made me happy. But I was like, all right, maybe eight, maybe they'll throw us off and, and kill the female off, and it'll be Amy. But I'm surprised all of them made it through. I was like, yeah. that's pretty cool and unique to, to an 80s <laughs> horror movie <laughs> to have one I, major death. <laughs> Yeah, I always thought it was kind of funny because um, I grew up watching the show as well, and I think you said you've seen it. But um, Amanda Bierce plays Amy, um, and she was on Married with Children, oh, and she's yeah. like their neighbor who was always made fun of. And I always just thought it was funny, like she she looks she looks like a you know a cute little yeah, you know, yeah. high school like, girl in this movie, and then in Married with Children, she's like made fun of all the time, oh. looking like a man or a chicken or a lesbian. <laughs> Oh my god. No, I liked her in this too. She was she was cute. Yeah. She and she and she looked really like I guess the word is like real. Like I don't real. know. She wasn't all dolled I mean, up with makeup and everything. She was cute and she had like her cute little short hair. She looked like a real person. <laughs> eventually I would like to show you the remake because I remember seeing it like I said. Yeah, didn't you and say I, they I changed her? Okay. Yeah. Well they changed a few of the characters, uh, another one for another reason you won't like either, but <laughs> But for well, Amy, <laughs> Amy, Amy in the remake, all I'll say is I feel like they gave her, and you'll completely understand this, but especially when you see it, but I feel like they did to Amy what they did to everyone in the Carrie 2013 remake. Uh, like over-glamorized? Yeah. A bit. <laughs> yeah. Like unnecessarily so. <laughs> Compared to this Amy who, yeah, who is attractive, but she looks like a cute little high school girl and she's not like the right. bombshell or whatever. Right, right. Yeah, they tend to, and I feel like that's like, oh, you guys shouldn't say that because you know, just because they're attractive actresses. Like, I always say the thing with Chloe Grace Moretz, like she is just, she is like, and that's a compliment. She's really pretty, and she's such a good actress. But was she a good Carrie? No. There are certain just looks that a certain that certain character should have, and I feel like Sissy Spacek had it with that Carrie, and you know, uh-huh. just Amy in in Fright Night had it with it. Like she looked like a real, like you said, just a cute little. Like, high school girl. Because I like how Amy was super, like, innocent. She wasn't, like, mm-hmm. a lot of horror movie, especially, again, for the times, 80s horror movie girls that are, like, you know... In the very beginning, she was getting nervous when Charlie was trying to, you know, mix moves and stuff. She wasn't <laughs> going for it. She was really nervous, and she wanted to stop, and it was really sweet, and she was very innocent. And I really like that. So I they know. turn her into just some, like... You know, I'm not saying she's probably like sex crazy, but that she, if she's some like hot girl that probably right, is all right. experienced, like that'll kind of ruin or at right. least cheapen the character to a certain degree for me because I liked how right. real Amy was yeah. in this. Well, that just reminded me of a couple moments of of, of Charlie ignoring her that were kind of fucked up but a little <laughs> funny just because he was so oblivious when like yeah, in the first scene they're making out and like she is like trying you know she's uncomfortable with it and then she eventually she like tries to be comfortable like i know i know she was so and then she's just on and it's but he had sort of got distracted out the window seeing next door and she's like on the bed i had buttoned her shirt and she's all nervous and like charlie i'm ready and then he just doesn't need to answer her at all and he's looking out the window and then she tries to run away oh it was funny too they they were running away like yelling about that like and then the the mom his mom was just in the living room. Oh yeah, yeah. And then she had to like like Amy had to like compose herself and be all polite to the mom, which I like. That yeah, yeah. Because I feel and like then, that would be part of her character to be like real polite to the parents. Yeah. <laughs> and then again, him ignoring her. Like they have the whole fight, and she's leaving, and she just says, you know, Charlie, I'll see you tomorrow, or Charlie, I love you, or whatever. Yeah. And he's just, again looking out the window, and he's just I think he just is like. <laughs> Uh huh. Or doesn't answer her at oh all. Oh my god! If we like, if we played like a drinking game where we drank every time he ignores Amy in that movie, like we would be drunk. Like it's like it is crazy yeah. and sad for Amy. But he, I mean, and you understand why he is if he's yeah. his vampire yeah. next door. But still, it's just like <laughs> he doesn't. Yeah. You. But even like in what is it when they're in the are they in like a cafeteria? Is yeah. What happens when yeah. or at a, are they at a restaurant or is I think, it cafeteria? I think it's a school cafeteria. Yeah. Yeah, and he gets like distra- when he got distracted there, I was like, come on, man! <laughs> like she's <laughs> she's so cute. Um, uh, no, I'm I glad know. we did bring her up because I kind of forgot, but I remember like when the movie opened and that happened. I think I even remember saying out loud to you like, oh, she's so cute. I really like her character because <laughs> she was so nervous and kind of you know like the sort of like the virgin girl that was prudish but like really liked this guy and wanted to like impress him. I like that because it's I feel like it is I guess not 
unique because a lot of the final girls are like I would say like Lori Strode's kind of like that like she was kind of like the shy virginy girl but I think it's different in this because there was no what is it like counterpart to counter Amy there wasn't like a Linda like a slutty girl right. that's gonna die by the vampire there was just her she was like the uh-huh. only female in the movie that represented the female of the movie and I liked how sweet and innocent she was and, and I don't know I re- I'm glad you brought that up because I completely forgot and then as I'm thinking about the beginning of the movie now that was something that really stood out to me I was like and at first I thought Charlie was just gonna be an asshole I didn't think he was gonna be the main character I thought it was gonna be her I thought he was gonna be like her uh-huh. throwaway boyfriend that was kind of an asshole and tried to oh that's her interesting into sex. That was my, uh, now that we're, th- I'm thinking about it, I remember the opening now, I thought, first of all, I thought they were at her house, I thought they were, like, in her bed for some reason, even though it looked like a, a dude's room, I was uh-huh. just like, oh, okay, because I, I just, oh, but if you remember, was... they weren't even on the bed, they were, they had, like, a oh, nicely made bed, and they were laying on the floor next to it, yeah, and I remember saying, you guys have a whole bed there, what do you do, <laughs> maybe they were trying to hide in case the mom popped in, or whatever, <laughs> right. but, um, but yeah, I, I seriously thought she was gonna be the main character, and he was gonna die because he was like the the mean boyfriend that was pressuring her. Because I remember uh-huh. very early on, before he gets all distracted and everything, he's like, "Oh, come on, Amy!" Like he really, really is like not like pissed off, but kind of like upset. Frustrated. Her. Yeah, frustrated is a good word. Yeah, that that she's not into it or doesn't or she seems nervous about it. So I literally thought he was gonna be one of the first characters to die. I thought his character at first, just at you know first glance or whatever, I thought he was gonna be like a jockey asshole dude just from the the opening and then as the movie went on i'm like oh i really like his character but that's literally what i thought i thought he was gonna be like the first mysterious death or whatever and it was interesting that it didn't play out that way like i had so many like weird and different thoughts of how the movie was gonna go that the then i was completely that's why I liked it though, because it, it took me off guard. I thought there were, I thought so many things were going to happen that didn't. And I, even like talking about the deaths earlier, when you said like I, I was saying like, no, I don't want Peter to die. I really thought he was going to die in, yeah. in that scene with with Evil Ed. I thought he was going to get killed or get transformed himself or something. But and then also onto what you were saying about you know Amy and you know she's like you feel for her at the beginning because she's innocent yeah. and she's nervous, and then I feel like that sort of helps it at the end. Like you you really wanted them to save her. Yeah, exactly. And it would have been sad if they hadn't been able to. Um, but yeah, I mean, on that, I think even though we both say that vampire movies are not like a subgenre we really are into or care about, but even having not seen a ton of other ones, because like you said, you went into this thinking one thing. Um, yeah, so many different things, how, and then they didn't. Happen. How like yeah, how um, unique I guess this vampire movie is compared to what you assume, which I'm sure a lot of them yeah. just are traditional sort of and, and kind of cliche i mean like i said i think every vampire and movie I, at least ones i've seen have their own yeah. spin on it but a lot of them are cliche and predictable and that's why i like this movie because it genuinely surprised me uh, like a lot of the time because i was like oh okay it's going this way so i know it's gonna happen like in my head i kept thinking like i know what's gonna happen i got this and it, it really did surprise me like at every every right. big angle that happened and i'm I like oh i didn't see that coming <laughs> i know and i think something that really helped that too is the the this movie's characters how yes. well defined they are and how likable they are and how enjoyable they are just to watch. I think all the characters and the, and the cast really help make the help make this movie very unique and enjoyable. Yeah. Cause otherwise it could have just been sort of like a cheesy throwaway vampire movie from the eighties. But I do think when you have a good cast and you have really well defined characters, it always helps. And you yeah. are like a sucker for that anyway. So yeah, and I mean, because you, you, you like everybody, you like Charlie, you like Amy, yeah. you like Peter, you like Ed, you like his the mom. <laughs> I know she's like a little obnoxious and oblivious, but it was great. No, she was great. There was I wish I remembered some of her. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say that she was like so funny. Like she would just go off track and like say stuff to him, and I'm just like, what the fuck? Like she was great. <laughs> yeah, everybody, yeah. even like a minor character like her, I do like how they gave her so much personality because she's like memorable. Like she may not have been. Yeah. Yeah. a lot but you remember her so uh-huh. i did like that so i guess that's all i really have to say on it and if there's anything else you want to add um it's again you know it's one of the movies that i do love i don't watch it as much as some of my other ones like pet cemetery right. or whatnot but um god i watch that movie like five thousand times <laughs> <laughs> um but this well, absolutely is one of my favorite movies and i'm glad i showed it to you yeah i was gonna well i guess if we're wrapping up for like final thoughts i was gonna like so I, I know you and I have said, and we both have said it on, on about each other's, you know, whatever, whenever we show each other something, we want to be completely honest. So the only thing I will say is I think 
it would have a little bit more of that nostalgia and charm to it too if I did grow up with it. I think it is one of those right. movies that if I had seen it as a kid, I would probably absolutely love it. Don't get me wrong, still really loved it. I already mm-hmm. just gave all my thoughts on it, so it's probably obvious that I really, really, I really did like it. And I am actually interested to see the remake just to see the, the differences and, you know, whenever I like oh, movie, yeah. I do like to see the <clears throat> shitty remake. So The remake, oh. and I mentioned this to you, there is Fright Night Part 2. Oh, where you didn't tell me a, that. a, a couple really rare, though, or something? And, yeah and a couple of the actors from this do return, return. in it and That's interesting. yeah i told you it's very rare you could get like a vhs on amazon for like 45 bucks Damn. so i would love so to like show you it print. and i i haven't <laughs> seen it i feel like i've seen it once or twice and i would love do to you see have it, it on DVD? i do i do oh, okay. i think my brother burned it for me or something but it would be <laughs> one i would love to show you just continuing you know character and story as we do but well, do it would definitely not like be it? an easy one uh, right. Yeah, I don't have the okay. love for it like this one, but it is cool right. to see the continuation of some characters and a new mm-hmm. story. And they, right. even did, they even did an incredibly unheard of thing where they had the remake, which was, of course, the remake of the original. And then the remake got a sequel, which was, and the sequel to the remake kind of sort of was remaking Fright Night Part 2. It oh, took a shit, lot of really? the story, which they don't oh. usually do. They usually just sort of go on their own thing. Do if their they, own thing, yeah. That's cool. That's interesting, actually. Yeah, no, I would definitely be interested to see other parts of this, you know, the whole thing. Um, But, like, I don't know, I guess, like, it's hard. The point I'm trying to make is kind of hard because I don't want it to sound like, oh, I just, I didn't like it. But I think if I had grown up with it, it would have had more of that 80s nostalgia that I absolutely love. Yeah, yeah. And No, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, but even still, I still really liked it. I mean, Ed Ed was sitting and watching it with me as we were watching it, and he really liked it. I remember him reacting to things and saying he really liked it. So, I mean, right. it's definitely a movie you could show somebody even if they didn't grow up with it. And it's, and I think also like taking what I just like in in movies in general, like besides horror, I told I think I told you this. My other favorite, you know, type of movie are eighty anything eighties. I absolutely love like. Mm-hmm. We would, and mainly teenage eighties, like you know, the high school movies. I always say it like that, but there's like so many in that category that I absolutely adore and love. So I think meshing eighties teenage angsty you know, high school movies with horror is like the perfect match for me. So that's probably why it appealed to me too. But again, if I I think if I had grown ups with it, it would have had that nostalgia that that right. Well, I was think like missing. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I understand what you're saying. I think this movie has its own sort of unique charm to it right that if it's something you grow up with it's just like you just love yeah it's that i don't know special one of those movies i don't know if this sounds weird or whatever but like i don't i suppose you know i, I don't know but like <laughs> if you want it's like a movie you watch from your childhood that kind of makes you feel like warm and comforted just because you grew up with it no yeah, matter the yeah, subject totally. matter because i was even thinking like do i feel that way about pet cemetery <laughs> i kind of do i guess even though it's no. fucked up no, I do too. I know exactly what you're saying. It might be, and when people think of the plot of Pet Cemetery, they're probably like, oh, you guys are fucked up and warped. But like, when it's something that, and especially when I think of the characters in Pet Cemetery, when I think of Judd, and I just, I just see his little crooked grin or him popping like a Chesterfield in his mouth or drinking a beer. I'm like, oh my God, I get that feeling. Yeah. So, I mean, but even about the whole movie, when I just think of that movie, I just get like this. And that's why it's my favorite, not only because it's scary and it's perfect in every way that I could ever imagine. And people have heard me go on and on about it, so I don't have to say anymore. But I, I think it's the nostalgia tied to it that also makes me just like, wow. Like, I think nostalgia has a plays a big part in movies that you just end up loving in your life. So right. or with anything, with music, there could be songs from your childhood that you just have grown up with. So they're super special. So nostalgia, especially for me, like I literally live on freaking nostalgia. At least once a day, I have like a mind trip of uh, memory that where I just think of like when I was a kid and certain smells and songs and movies and stuff just do that and I think that brings the magic out of it even more so if I had grown up with Fright Night I think there would be more of that magical feeling that I guess just and that's with anything though anything that you show me now that I didn't grow up with is is obviously going to lack that because I didn't grow up with it but I think Mm -hmm. this would have been the perfect movie that if I had seen as a kid I would have felt the same exact way that you and your brother feel towards it like oh that's like you know such a magical nostalgic time in my life and I unfortunately don't have it but even still it was still such a good movie so I'm super glad you did show it to me everything you've shown me so far has been has been pretty good I'm waiting to see if we get to one where I'm like nope Dylan don't see the appeal (laughs) But I know, I know. So good. <laughs> we we shall see. There are some, at, you know, in retrospect that I'm like, yeah, that might have been my least favorite one you showed me, Brandy. But that's something. Right. Yeah. Right. That would but, be interesting, though. Like maybe after we show each other five or six or whatever, I think we're up there already. We've probably shown each other at least 
at least six now by because we both do three and three. But it would be interesting not really to rank them specifically because we'd have to remember a lot, but maybe kind of talk. Maybe after we show each other the three, be like, so which one did you like the least out of the three? Which one did you like the best and why? It'd be kind of mm-hmm. interesting to like, even if we don't do it specifically on a podcast, maybe you and right. I would just talk about it together because I think that'd be interesting and we'd kind of get more of a grasp of each other's taste. Although I think at this point we kind of know each other's taste by yeah. now, but yeah. but because it's very similar. But yeah, no, Friday Night was awesome. I'm really glad you showed it to me. I, it did mesh two of my favorite type of movies into one, and I liked it. I'm, I'm again, really surprised I was never shown it as a child. I do have to remember to ask my dad when I see him, like, hey, have you ever seen Fright Night from 1985? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. It's, it's Again, I'll just say this to, to wrap up. Um, it, it's a movie I love. It's a movie I'll always love, and it's, it's one that even after we watched it, I was like, can we redo our top five? Because I couldn't want to <laughs> sort of squeak that. that in there and kick another one out. But <laughs> oh, I feel that way too. Like but, picking the number five spot's always hard because you're like, I could rotate it with so many different things. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Fright Night is a fantastic '80s gem that yeah. is is a movie you probably will enjoy, even if you like Brandy and I are not into vampire movies. Yeah. Exactly, because it well, it had so much more going for it than just that. So, because I, I was, I will admit, like when you first told me about, it, I was a little bit hesitant. Cause I'm just like, you know, cause yeah. you and I always talk about vampires and and sci-fi are not really our thing. But I'm sure, right. Maybe if we gave some sci-fi movies a chance, or like horror sci-fi related stuff, we might even right. like a few of those. You never know. But I know that vampires aren't really my thing, and yet I still really enjoyed it because it had enough going for it. It was unique. It had really good characters and really good acting, which always helps. Like the casting was wonderful, like your brother said. Right. Um, so yeah, that's probably why it was enjoyable because it had so many more layers than just oh, this is a vampire movie. So, yeah. Perfect. 